Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors. Present your class president, Lakin Pafford. Now we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which I stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please remain standing and salute the flag as we have the Star-Spangled Banner. may be seated.
I am honored to wave the flag and express my patriotism and pride in America and to say thank you to the men and women, past and present, who have served our nation's military. Thus, it is on this annual occasion we recall the valor, bravery, and sacrifice to those who have served to defend and to fight for this nation's freedom and liberty. Veterans Day is that special day of the year when we gather to honor, salute, and pay respect to every patriotic man and woman who has ever worn the uniform in our armed forces. There are now a little over 23 million veterans nationwide. Hundreds of thousands of young men and women are serving in today's armed forces. All have faced the greatest test that can be applied to American citizenship, being willing to risk one's life to defend this country's freedoms and liberties. Every person who has worn a military uniform, has served with honor, has passed the test of citizenship. Veterans Day provides an opportunity to pause and reflect on how blessed we are in the U.S. We should take time to recall what that costs. Many have suffered the shock and pain of combat. Some have become disabled for life while countless others have given the ultimate sacrifice. All who served have given up some of the best years of their lives. Why did they do it? Simply because there was a job to be done and they were the ones called to do it. What was the result of their sacrifice? Simply this, America's freedoms and liberties remain ours to control. If we value anything more than freedom, we will lose our freedom. We may be certain or uncertain about many things in America, but one thing we have no reason to be uncertain about is the respect and honor we owe to those who have served in this nation's armed forces. Lastly, to those young Americans in uniform today, here and around the world, we say Godspeed and send out to you our prayers and sincere wishes for your safe return home. On the 11th hour, on the 11th day, in the 11th month in 1918, an armistice or a temporary ending of hostilities happened that was declared between the Allied nations and Germany in World War I, then known as the Great War. Commemorated as Armistice Day beginning the following year, November 11th became a legal federal holiday in the United States in 1938. In the aftermath of World War II and the Korean War, Armistice Day became Veterans Day, a holiday dedicated to American veterans of all wars. Though the, though the Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919, November 11th remained in the public imagination as the date that marked the end of the war to end all wars. 
In November 1918, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day. The day's observation included parades and public gatherings such as this, as, we, as well as brief pauses in business activities at 11 a.m. On November 11, 1921, an unidentified American soldier killed in World War I was buried at Arlington National Cemetery, which lies across the river from Washington, D.C., Arlington. Arlington National Cemetery bears witness to America's history, pays tribute to our military, and recognizes the sacrifice made by our men and women in uniform. The Tomb of the Unknowns is guarded by the U.S. Army 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The U.S. Congress has designated that, that day a legal holiday in honor of those who have participated in the war. On the same day, unidentified soldiers were laid to rest at Westminster Abbey in London and at the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. On June 4, 1926, Congress passed a resolution that the, recruiting an the recurring anniversary of November 11, 1918 should be commemorated and with thanksgiving and prayer and exercises designated to perp perpetuate peace through goodwill and mutual understanding between nations, and that the President should issue an annual proclamation calling for the observance of Armistice Day. By, the, by that time, 27 state legislatures Less legislatures had made November 11th a legal holiday. An act approved May 13, 1938 made November 11th a legal federal holiday. Today, all 50 states have now followed that resolution by declaring November 11th a legal holiday. We will celebrate this Sunday, but since we are not in school that day, we designated this day as our day of celebration. Veterans Day continues to be observed on November 11th regardless of what day of the week on which it falls. The restoration and observance of Veterans Day to November 11th not only preserves the historical significance of the date, but helps focus attention on the important purposes of Veterans Day, a celebration to honor veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and a willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. Would you please join with me in a round of applause for our veterans. Our guest speaker is David McClellan. He is a 1967 graduate of Great Bend High School. While attending, he participated in cross country and track and field. He worked just as hard, enough, just hard enough to maintain a C average, something he said was a big mistake. Mr. McClellan set the GBHS mile record, now the 1600 meter race, in 1967. This record still stands after 51 years. Mr. McClellan continued his education at Fort Hayes State where he participated in cross country and track. He was a national champion in, in the 3,000 meter steeplechase in 1972. McClellan received a degree in education in 1972 and began his career teaching history, physical education, and coaching at Hoisington Middle School. He taught and coached at Hoisington for 35 years and then taught history at Great Bend Middle School for three years. During most of this time, he served in the Army Reserves and retired as a Sergeant First Class with 27 years of service. David married the love of his life, Lois, 45 years ago, and they have three grown children and three grandchildren. Please give a round of applause for, for Sergeant David McClellan. Good morning to all of you, to all the veterans here in attendance today. 
51 years ago when I was sitting out there where you are right now, if one of my classmates or friends would have said that I'm going to be behind this podium speaking to the student body of Great Bend High School, I would say that they're nuts. But here I am. So one never knows what opportunities life will present for itself. I am very humbled to be here speaking to you today because there are many veterans in this audience that are much more worthy than I to be here. But I am very honored to be here to talk about what Veterans Day means to me. I spent a great deal of time pondering who was the greatest veteran that our country ever had. And I finally came to the conclusion that there was no one person that was greater than any other veteran. All the veterans that served in uniform are equally important to this country. One person, however, kept coming to mind, and I'm not even sure if this person was a veteran. I know all of you in eighth grade had United States history because I taught that over here. And in that class, you learned about a man called Paul Revere. And I'm not sure that he's a veteran. But as you learned, at that time, the United States was growing disgruntled with the treatment from Great Britain, who controlled the 13 colonies of North America. So as time progressed, the colonists finally started talking about the possibility of independence. So on that one evening, when they realized that the British was sending an army to Lexington and Concord to try to destroy some weapons that they had stockpiled there and to arrest a couple patriots, Paul Revere rode through the streets of Boston yelling that the British were coming. And this ragtag army kind of formed on the road between Lexington and Concord. And the British were coming with the greatest military in the world at that particular time. A few shots were fired, and the American Revolution began. And by the grace of God, this ragtag military won independence. Let's go south just a little bit. In the early 1800s, New Spain was controlled by Spain. And the people of New Spain were getting, again, disgruntled with the way they were being treated. There was a Catholic priest in a little community called Dolores, Mexico. And this Catholic priest ministered to the Indians, the mestizos, the poor, and he could see how terribly they were being treated. So one morning, Father Hildago went to his church. He rang his church bells, and the Mexican Revolution began. And by the grace of God, Mexico defeated the Spanish, and they became a great country as well. And I'm not sure if the veterans of the American Revolution, or if Mexico even honors their veterans, but they should. I feel very fortunate that I came from a long line of veterans. My granddad, my mother's dad, served during World War I. I have two uncles, my mom's oldest brother and youngest brother, the oldest brother, Don, served in the Air Force in World War II. Her younger brother, Cecil, served in the Army. Listen very carefully to this. Uncle Cecil celebrated his 18th birthday on a little beach off the coast of France called Omaha Beach in the invasion of Normandy one of the bloodiest battlefields and deadliest battlefields that the United States has ever fought in. Can you imagine celebrating your 18th birthday and something like that? 
but because of the veterans that fought on those beaches in Normandy, they opened up a pipeline so that the military could move forward and drive Hitler out of France and eventually drive Hitler clear back into Germany where his terrible regime was finally brought to an end. My dad served under General Patton in World War II in the 3rd Armored Division. And my dad fought in places like the Battle of the Bulge, fought in Austria, and fought his way all the way to Germany. My dad didn't drive a tank, but my dad built bridges to get the tanks over so they could keep the Germans on retreat. My dad never talked much about the war, as many veterans do. He loved to fish, and periodically, or as much as we could, we would go fishing together. And on one of these trips, I brought some MREs, meals ready to eat back from Desert Storm, where I had participated in. So we ate those MREs on one of these fishing trips, and I asked him a few questions. I says, what about the Battle of the Bulge? He thought for a moment, and he said it was cold. It was terribly, terribly cold there. That's all he said. Then he said, these MREs are a whole lot better than what we had to eat, and I'm sure he's right. But my dad was extremely proud, as well as my uncles and my granddad, to have served this country. My son, when he graduated from high school, I asked him, I said, are you going to go to college like your friends? And he said, no, I'm not going to go to college. So I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to join the Marine Corps. And my heart was full of pride when he said that. So a few days later, I asked him, I said, well, what are you going to do in the Marine Corps? You have to remember that in all branches of the military, there are simply hundreds and hundreds of jobs that are required to keep the military moving. He said, I don't know. I said, well, you need to think about it. A few days later, he came back and he said, I want to become an air traffic controller. I said, that would be great. So the Marine Corps taught him how to be an air traffic controller, how to talk to pilots off the ground, how to talk pilots back on the ground with helicopters and whatever they're flying. He loved his job. So when he got out of the Marine Corps, that's what he does in civilian life. But the neat thing about it is that the Marine Corps taught him a trade that he is now using in his civilian life. And a sidebar is that kid is making a whole lot more money being an air traffic controller than his old man ever made teaching students in a classroom. I also had two older brothers that served in the Army. And right now, I have a nep nephew, one of your teachers, Daniel Snyder's older brother, is serving in the United States Army as a Green Beret. The military is teaching him a trade as well, because when he gets out, he will be just a few hours short of becoming a medical doctor, and the government is paying for all of his schooling. Arlington Cemetery was mentioned just a little while ago. I have one short story to tell you. When I was going to basic training in Fort Dix, New Jersey, we won a weekend pass, the platoon did, for doing well on the rifle range. So three or four of my friends decided that we would go to Washington, D.C., and we ended up at Arlington National Cemetery. What a humbling place. You should all put that on your bucket list to go there someday. Well, while we were there, we went to the tomb of the unknown soldiers. 
And at the Tomb of the Yonan soldiers, like was mentioned, they march back and forth 24 hours a day. So we were in there in time when they were changing the guard mount. And so the soldier that was going to walk that guard mount was being inspected by the sergeant of the guard. And you could see his eyes just scanning this soldier that was getting ready for guard mount. Then all of a sudden, the sergeant of the guards, his eyes just froze. And that sergeant of the guard reached out and took a little piece of lint off that soldier's uniform. And then he commenced to chew his ass out something terrible. Pardon the language. And then as the sergeant of the guard relaxed a little bit, he said, you know, by that little piece of lint on your uniform, you disrespected every soldier, every man or woman in the military that have given their life for this country. You disrespected them. What pride those people that walk that guard mount and those soldiers have is unbelievable. And that vision and that, the words were in, imprinted in my brain and they're still there today. Here comes the punchline. You knew that was coming sooner or later. Whether you students have thought about it or not, you are the next generation for this great country. You will determine or help determine the future of our country. And every one of you have a responsibility. So what does that mean? Those of you that choose not to serve in the military, that is fine, but you still have a responsibility to our country. And that is to be the best citizen that you can possibly be. And what does that mean? Be the best man or the best woman that you can be. Work hard, take care of your families, vote, obey the laws. And if you do these things, you are helping our country and fulfilling your responsibility. Those of you that choose to serve in the military, I can guarantee you, even though I don't know you, that you will have a pride in your heart for the rest of your life that no one will be able to take away from you until you take your last breath on this earth. And these veterans in the audience today can second what I'm saying. That pride will never go away. So if you decide to join the military, my advice would be to be the best soldier that you could possibly be. Work hard for promotion, follow the rules of the military, and dedicate your service to our country. And finally, let the military teach you a skill, a trade, that you can use for the rest of your life. I want to thank you all for being such a wonderful, attentive audience. May God bless you all and your families. May God bless the men and women that have dedicated their life to this country in the military and those that are still serving around the world. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. And in closing, I'm going to step away from this podium, and I'm going to salute you for being a wonderful audience.
Thank you, Sergeant McClellan. And now, as you are seated, in recognition of our veterans in attendance, we are going to play each theme song from each branch of the military. And as we play your theme song for whatever branch you served in, we ask that you stand and be recognized today. United States Army. United States Navy. U.S. Coast Guard. United States Marine Corps. United States Air Force. And now in recognition for students and faculty who are currently have someone in the military, would you please rise? Thank you for your sacrifice, each and every one of you. This poem was written by Colonel John McRae during World War I, a surgeon with Canada's, Canada's 1st Brigade Art Artillery. It expressed McRae's grief over the row and row of graves of soldiers who died on Flanders' battlefield. Located in the region of western Belgium and northern France, the poem presented a striking image of the bright red flowers blooming among the rows of white crosses and became a rallying cry to those who fought in the First World War. The first printed version of it reportedly was in December 1915 in the British magazine Punch. I present to you In Flanders Field. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, 
between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky that larks still bravely sing and fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunsets glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the, flow, with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold on high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. for a salute to freedom by the orchestra. You may be seated. Thank you, students and audience, for your respect, for your attendance today. Thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank Mr. DeWald and the, and the GBHS band. Thank Ms. Stambaugh and the, and the uh, singers this morning. Thank Miss Demery for her con conduction of the orchestra. And we thank the administration, the custodial staff, the American Legion, the American Legion Riders, and the VFW. And now if you'll please stand and salute the colors
as the American Legion riders retire the flag. all the veterans for coming out today. Students, you're to report back to your classes for second hour. <laughs>